I have gathered five Rust game developers to make a game together, but only one person can work at the game at a time, and no communication is allowed between each other. After eight hours, the game is passed from one developer to the next, and after five rounds, we'll have a completely different game for what we started with. With five chefs working on a single dish, we have a unique opportunity to explore some crazy game ideas, and this particular one evolved into something I did not expect. The first developer of this jam is me, Tan Tan. <laughs> Okay, so the game idea is pretty simple. Trees! Ta -da! I love trees. Okay, I was actually basing this game upon my graduation project I did about 8 years ago. It's a party battle arena where the player with the most collected logs at the end wins. It's basically just a copy of that game I made long time ago. But considering I only have 8 hours on this project, chances are it might end up being something totally different considering I'm not the only one working on this game. But we can build the baseline. First we need trees. Import. Where's the texture? So apparently I don't know how Blender works. And then we'll have a beautiful pine. Wow, look! Now these trees are pretty static, I want them to come alive. If you run into a tree, I want it to wobble. If you hit it, I want it to wobble. Of course, one way to do that is on collision. Just get the angle between the player and the tree, and then just apply rotation on that axis. We could animate that programmatically. Or, you know, we could do it the fancy, super over-engineered way. What if we put the joint on the bottom of the tree, and then we flip gravity upside down? It's genius, that way the tree will always stand up and we can collide with it. The magic of physics engines. Of course it worked on the first try, because I'm such a good programmer. If we count the 20th time as the first time, oh, physics programming. We need a forest of trees, and a cool way to generate the shape of the forest is to use a noise function. In my code I iterate a grid, and for every position I get a noise value. If the value is above a certain threshold value, we want to spawn a tree on that location. Very simple, yet very effective to get so quick procedural generation in the game. I've spent half this jam just working on trees. We did some gameplay quickly. I added in some players you can spawn. I then made a simple projectile system with a little customization for future developers, so they can implement different cool attacks. I also made an axe attack that hits things in a cone in front of the player. Now it would be useful if the attacks actually did something, so I added a health system. Bing, bang, boom. We can now cut trees. And now all that is missing is to put a brain into the enemies so we have something to fight. I made a very dumb AI controller that randomly moves and attacks. Uh, the ground disappeared for some reason. How OP are the enemies? My 8 hours is closing up, I don't have time for AI. I made the trees drop logs that the player can collect. Visually it looks like something happens, but technically we don't have a resource slash an inventory system yet. So picking up logs doesn't actually do anything at the moment. My 8 hours is now up and there is no gameplay loop, but we have some core mechanics future developers can play around with. Wouldn't it be crazy if the final product ends up being similar to the game I was basing this off? Anything can happen! Hello everyone, I'm Issei, and welcome to my part of the video. The trees are shaking. I don't know what to control. Oh, I shoot with spacebar. Trying to find maybe there's a way to move around, but I'm guessing there's not. I looked around the code a bit, and I found code that should be moving the player, but obviously it wasn't moving. I also tried running the game without release mode. The player is moving here but it's lagging a lot. It was not past 12 p.m., but I had come up with a plan. So, I thought about what would be in this forest. A monkey, of course. And we are the monkey taking the trees from lumberjack robots. First off, fix the movement issues in release mode. It turned out to be that the velocity was being multiplied by delta time, meaning that the change in position would be multiplied by delta time squared. So, it worked for Tantan, -tan, who probably had lower FPS, but I had high enough FPS to barely notice it moving. That also explains why it worked in debug mode, since I had lower FPS there. Luckily, I only spent a couple of minutes finding and fixing this, so I'll have lots of time for actual implementation stuff. I started with making a banana model, which will grow on trees, and I plan on using the pickup system for these. Then I added an inventory system and UI to keep track of picked up items. It means working with Bev UI, which I'm not very used to, but I got something simple working. I also added some better lighting to the scene. Tantan had named the existing enemy AI Dumb Controller, so I felt like it was something that needed to be switched out. I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted enemies to do, target the monkey if it's close enough, otherwise target the closest tree. 
I wanted the player to be able to aim using mouse instead of using movement direction. I then switched out the characters for some simple models. I wanted the player to be able to spend resources, so I made a shot, which meant back to baby UI. Spent way too much time trying to get this to align to the right screen. I implemented trees actually spawning when buying it in the shop, and some more items in the shop to upgrade your weapon. I added a notification that's triggered by a bevy event which I added up to when the game starts and when you lose, which you can do by dying or by all the trees being destroyed. Now I have less than an hour left, the last thing I'm going to attempt is making an apple, making some trees drop that instead of bananas, and add a shop item which costs apples that can heal your character. That's all for me, and since I get to shout something out, go check out Valorum. It's an open source game in Rust that's free to play, and if you like it, maybe even consider contributing. Unfortunately, the video files of Brain were all corrupted. So instead, here's a quick recap on what Brain implemented. A proper state management system where the game now progressed to the next level when killing all enemies. Every new wave completion, a new robot spawns in, and the player gets some new trees as well. There's a bunch of new sound effects added. Brain also implemented a bunch of bug fixes and quality of life improvements. Hey everybody, I'm Flimmy. I've been using Bevy professionally for a year for an architectural software company. I do game development as a hobby in my free time, and uh, I love this engine and I'm super stoked to participate in this challenge. Alright, this is top-down view. Nice. It's pretty already. These robots picking up trees. Are they hostile? They are hostile, okay. You can plant trees, increase damage. Wow, there's a lot of stuff already. Neutralized. Oh, I lost, okay. Protect the trees! Okay, I need to read. <laughs> Yay, I did it! When I received the game, it didn't have much of a progression in difficulty. Every wave spawned exactly one robot. My plan for the game was to make an increasing difficulty curve as the game progresses. I also wanted to add more gameplay elements to make the game more interesting. First, to get familiar with the code base, I started with a low hanging fruit, which is adding a health bar to the characters. I made it display on top of every entity with health, but that also included the trees, so it was getting a little crowded. So I added a component to specify which entities should have a health bar, added that to the player and the robots, and that was much better. Then, I wanted to add a tower to the game, in a sort of tower defense style, that would shoot arrows at the robots. I mean, I don't know if an arrow would really do much damage to a robot made of metal, but we're not here for realism after all. Just need to adjust the size a little bit. Oh shit, <laughs> it's huge. And also the size of hitbox. Huh, interesting. <laughs> That's better. I then made the towers target and shoot arrows at the nearest enemies. That worked fine, except the towers had a really bad aim. The problem is that they were just shooting arrows toward where the enemies were, and not where the enemies would be once the arrow reached it. So I added a simple prediction system to the towers to calculate the future positions of the enemies. It wasn't perfect, but it did the job quite well. At this point, I realized a couple of problems. The towers were accidentally hitting the trees and dealing more damage to them than the robots were, which kind of defeats the point. So to fix this, I took the lazy route and just prevented the arrows from interacting with the trees. Not very realistic, but again, not here for realism. Another problem was that the only way to shoot enemies was to click exactly on their hitbox, which meant that you could only hit them if they were moving directly towards you. Otherwise, they would just move away before the arrow hits them, and you would always miss. So to fix that, I also made the arrows automatically turn towards their target, basically turning them into homing missiles, realism, blah blah blah. I added a simple cursor indicator to show which entity the player is aiming at, and after a couple of attempts, I got the homing arrows working. After doing that, the predictive systems in the towers were pretty much useless, so I just ended up removing them. At this point, the attack mechanic was feeling pretty good. I noticed that the towers were overpowered because they could shoot anywhere in the map, so I added a maximum range indicated by a green circle. That way, a strategy emerged where you are encouraged to plant trees within the tower's shooting radius in order to protect them. But you can't put too many or you get blocked by their hitbox, and moving becomes difficult. I fixed a bug where items dropped by enemies would remain stuck in the air. That was due to them starting to get picked up by the enemies right before they respawned, so they were getting stuck in that animation. I made some additional sound effects for the arrows, the item pickup, and the robot death, and finally pass the game on to the next jammer. If you want to find me, I'm on the Bevy Discord as Flimmy, and I also have a blog at azorlog.dev, which is almost empty at the moment, but I plan to post some progress reports on the racing game side project I'm working on, and other shenanigans. That was a really fun and challenging experience. Thanks for having me!
Hey everyone, I'm Max and I am a professional software developer. I have been working on a bunch of projects and game development in my free time and I have been a convinced Rust evangelist. I have been dabbling around in Bevy for a while, but I haven't really gotten into it that deep. What actually surprised me was how clean the code was for it to be a game jam. Usually game jam games give me war flashbacks. The first task that I decided to tackle was to improve the character model. So I slapped together this quick little character. I also added this little detail that made it so that the monkey bot faces towards what it aims at, which I thought added a really nice touch. Next thing, I wanted to add some closure to the game. I was not aiming for something particularly challenging, but I was set on the idea of having a big, chunky and scary final boss. He is very slow and has pretty slow recharge for his attacks. However, if he runs into a tree, it chops it down instantly and the same fate will happen to the player. I was running out of time, so I decided to only do one more change. I decided to go for a nice little background to add more to the setting of our game. So I put together a face-like texture and I downloaded a noise map. I wrote a small shader that created small sine waves in the displacement of the pixels, with the intensity being determined by the actual noise map. What this does is create this almost three-dimensional ripple effect. It's really fast to put together the game. Job, thus creating this island-like setting. My main takeaway from this jam is that Bavy is amazing and it was extremely easy to add new features on top of what already existed without turning the code base into a spaghetti plate. I would also love to thank Tantan for hosting this amazing jam and for having been one of the main figures that introduced me to Rust. Thank you very much to everyone who participated to this jam. Now, all of the jammers are done and this is the final game. But wait a minute, it looked different in the beginning of this video. What's going on here? You see, when I got the final game, I realized we're all a bunch of programmers. No shit, Sherlock! And in eight hours, it's more exciting to add some more gameplay things than focus on graphics. But to give this project a satisfactory, you see, ending, I decided to take another round of this project and put on the artist hat and improve the graphics a ton. I hope you're ready for some action. Firstly, or shall I say firstly, I found nicer looking tree models on the internet. Here it is in game. Now I didn't record any progress videos because I was going blazingly fast. So you've already seen massive spoilers on the screen, so enjoy. I then found two nice ground textures on the internet. But since I'm a programmer terrified of painting, I decided to paint the ground with shaders instead. I simply sampled the grass and ground texture using a noise texture. Well, it's not a noise texture, it's a noise function. I found it online. I use this noise to have dirt when the value is zero and have grass when the value is one. The programmer way of painting stuff is to make it runtime editable. Bevy Igui editor is the bomb. Now to avoid having an invisible wall that you run into, I made a visible wall instead. So you guessed it, it's shader time. I simply have this beautiful texture where I scroll the UV map's exposition over time. Then I have this fade out effect on the top of the model by setting the alpha to fade out the higher we get on the Y world position. I found this cool robot model so I quickly whipped up a clone of the other robots and just swapped the graphics. And then it was time to change the player graphics. I dropped this model I found online into Mixamo to animate it. And here's where the struggles began. I have no idea how to export the Blender model with more than one animation. So in a moment of rage, I decided to do it the stupid but genius way. Export the 3D model three times with one animation each. Then in game I place these three models at the player position and when one is playing I hide the other two. This is actually what it looks like if I don't hide them. This is the hackiest thing I've ever made. That's the graphics overhaul. But as a treat I found another cool 3D model on the internet that I thought would be cool to use as a device that spawns trees over time. And that's that. This took me about six hours to build all in all. Great success! Oh my god, the music. What? The graphics? Okay. <laughs> okay. I see a bunch of improvements to the models. The player model looks really good. Looks so much better. I love the Naruto running. <laughs> okay, let's make a tree spawner. Nice. If I hadn't mastered this game before, I would have been completely destroyed by the game because <laughs> this looks extremely fast-paced and it just throws you in. Uh, I have two trees. Yay. Oh my god, there's a bus. Nice. I 
think I'm gonna miss that. Alright. This is pretty hard. So this is, this is the strategy that I found. Great! We can say an action-packed adventure uh, next month on Steam, waiting you all there. <laughs> I was surprised how different the final product was compared to my initial ideas about this game. Now gameplay wise it is not that replayable, you always end up clumping everything together in the end. This game turned out to be something I've never seen before. It's a cool idea to build upon but it probably needs some major gameplay changes. The project is open source linked down below, thanks to all the participants, I had a lot of fun with this. And thank you to my patrons for making this channel possible. Special thanks to Apex, David Klosterman, Default Dane, Drifio, Carrots the Fun, Isa, Jim Hamilton, Julian Schmidt, Lido, Raisin, St. Rich, Painzer, Drepsicora, Turbo Huffle. <laughs>